if you're using Google Colab for your machine learning tasks, you could be actually wasting a lot of money. I want to show you today a different option, which I've personally been using for a lot of my machine learning tasks recently. It's called Vast AI. Now with Vast AI, similarly to Google Colab, you basically just rent GPUs, which you can just use through a internet connection. The aim of this quick guide is to get you started with Vast AI, and I'll show you how to use it, how I personally use it for a couple of different use cases. So after you log into Vast AI, you would see something like this as your screen. Now, let me explain quickly what is happening here. Here on the left, right here, you can actually change and select your Docker image. A Docker image you can think of as just like how you want the actual machine to be built. Here on the right, you have some options on what kind of GPU you want. And then here, of course, you find all the options of GPUs with their respective pricings. And then also here, the option to actually rent it. Okay. Now for usually for machine learning, I just go with the usual A100. You know, I just think that especially for tasks which have to really use something like audio data and all that these GPUs are especially useful. One thing that this is like a pro tip of mine uh, that I found really useful is this metric right here. Okay. Now this is the upload and download speed. And I found that especially if you're using big data sets, the download speed is super, super crucial because it's a difference of basically paying for two, three hours to download your data. If this would take three hours to download my data, this would be a waste of time, right? Or it could be the difference of downloading it in 15 minutes, you know? So while the price might be, for instance, here higher, the download speed is higher too, meaning you can actually just get going faster, meaning this might actually in the end be cheaper than this just due to the download speed. Now, they also do have a metric right here on how good it is in deep learning. I'm not quite sure how interesting this metric is, but you can keep it in mind. Here you, of course, see the GPU that you would rent, right? And also, which is important, how many gigabytes it is, right? So we see here 40 gigabytes and then 80 gigabytes. Don't forget, not every A100 is the same, but yeah. What actually also might be important for you is the where exactly it is hosted. Now, this was important for me because one time I actually rented a GPU from Taiwan. And since, you know, I currently live in Europe, it's pretty far and the connection was pretty bad. Okay. So since this is just for show, I will rent a cheaper GPU, inshallah. So I will for now just select, let's say like an A100. There we go. Sorry, an A10, I mean. So we can see here a couple of A10s. We'll just select this one for now. And then I hit rent. Now, after you hit rent, you will see an in instances, actually all the ones that you have here and that are running. Okay, so once your instance is now actually up and running, what you can actually do then is you can just click on open. And once you click on open, you will see here your connection. And yeah, there now you can, for instance, uh, launch Jupyter or just Jupyter Terminal. So if you launch the terminal, you can actually just, you know, LS, you know, and you're basically in the terminal. So you can clone your project. This is what I usually do. So I just get to my project right here and then uh, I clone it. And then, you know, I run the make train, for instance, to actually train the, the, uh, GitHub repo, you know, or the model, or of course, you can also just do this if you like this more to actually do this with, you know, with an actual Jupyter's notebook. I know some people prefer it. I've taken like a step away from Jupyter's notebook, except for like data exploration or something like that, where I just look at what I'm dealing with. But other than that, I usually just have everything in one GitHub repo and then just have a make file which runs all the commands that I want right here. Uh, yeah. So this is how you'd open it like this. You can, however, I will say this, you can also add SSH keys. <laughs> I won't show my SSH key now, but basically you can connect to it through your laptop. So when you connect it to your laptop, you can open this here, like I did myself in a separate window. 
and connect it through SSH and then you can actually just train it right here, you know? This is my preferred version. Let me try to quickly see if I can connect it again. So if I get my SSH key and I will have to blur this in a second, and then I go here and add or remove SSH key. I will paste it in right here and then I'll blur this in a second. You would then have to click add SSH key, this button right here. It's not that logical. Their UI isn't that nice. It took me a while to find this button. But yeah, you'll have to press this. And then you will actually find here direct SSH connect. Okay. So you just copy this with the button right here and then paste it in your terminal. So I go to my terminal now and I paste this in. And yeah, I'm connected now to my environment. As you can see, I can click LS. This is my environment right here. I have my GitHub repo that I showed you before with all my code. And now I can do, you know, UV sync to sync all the documents and all that. I will cancel this right now. Uh, but yeah, this is basically how you'd connect through this. And there is also actually a way to connect with VS Code if you prefer that. And this is the last thing that I'll show you. So with VS Code, and this is cursor, you know, it's basically the same thing anyways, right? You can go here on connect via SSH, okay? And then you just, uh, for, uh, for me personally, I click on configure SSH host. And then in your host file, you can actually add here everything that you need to. So your host name, your user port and all of that, right? So this is how you would do this. Okay. And yeah, then you just go back and you click on connect via SSH, vast AI, you know, that's how I called it. And yeah, now I'm basically connected, <laughs> but yeah. And now I'm basically inside cursor in my vast AI thing and I can just, you know, do everything I want to, right? Like make train baseline, you know, and then this would run my baseline code and download everything as you can see. So yeah, this is like a very short getting started with vast AI. Yeah, maybe one last thing that I can also show you. Of course, you don't actually have to stay with this image right here. So you can also change template and here's some other stuff that they have, you know, for instance, one thing that I also did with this is uh, you can actually open Olama with this, for instance, then run your own LLMs through Vast AI. And it's actually really like a lot cheaper than alternatives. For instance, if you see here, Hugging Face Inferent, if we go to, let's say, like this one right here, we can see that. So for instance, if we see here an A100 is $2.5 uh, per hour, which is more than the double that what we are paying for, you know? So as you can see, this would be also a lot easier. One thing that I do, however, have to mention, oh yeah, by the way, here also, you can just destroy your instance to just completely remove it. Uh, yeah, one thing that I do, however, have to mention is that as I understood it, these are not data centers. These are like private people running these GPUs. So don't try to put any like sensitive data on these like rented virtual machines and all that, you know, just be very wary of that, you know. Also, one problem that they are trying to fix, so I did talk with them and they are trying to fix it, is they are trying to actually, you know, um, make it easier to deal with data. Because, of course, for every virtual machine that you start, your data is completely blank. So you have to re-download it again and all that. So, yeah, be wary of that. And you can also connect it actually. Uh, to the cloud, for instance, like uh, you can connect it to Google Drive and all that. But yeah, usually I just re-download the data. And yeah, thank you for listening. I hope you learned a lot, you know, and I'm looking forward to see what you can do with Vast AI.